Mr. Gann, did you wish to make any statement regarding sentencing? Uh, I would just like to say how profoundly sorry I am over his children, grandchildren, family, and friends, and to the community for this tragic and horrible accident. That day, a great woman to so many people lost her life because I drove drunk. I feel your pain, and it is with me daily as you are foremost in my thoughts and prayers. Eventually, I hope that you can find forgiveness in your hearts. You should know that this has caused me to look at the error of my ways and also shows just how destruct destructive an addiction to alcohol is. Drinking and driving is never okay, and I am extremely sorry for your profound loss. My hope is that after today, Mr. Van de Bogart, his family, can begin to heal, as well as put all of this court and court appearances behind you. I have to live with this every day, and I actively and daily try to live in a way that would bring honor to the name of your wife and mother, grandmother. I'm sincere and sorry for that day, and if I had one wish, it would be to go back to that day and not drink and drive. However, I cannot do that. So I just reflect on that and soul search to become a better man, husband, father, and grandfather to my family. Although there is never an acceptable reason to drink and drive, uh, let me tell you why I've struggled with alcoholism. It was to medicate my PTSD. There have been a lot of people who have tried to express just how bad it was for me to drink as a coping me mechanism. They include my grandma Arlene, my mother, and my wife. Since I've been sober off of alcohol and on various psych medications, I've had a renewed mental clarity and have thought deeply about how selfish I was that day. And although nothing will ever take your pain away, I pray that in time that you and your family find healing moving forward, I vow to you Mr. Vanden Bogart, that I will never drink again in prison or as a free person, and that I'm fully committed to becoming a better person and working to help as many people as possible, tutoring while I'm incarcerated. I never woke up that morning expecting for anything like this to happen, and I'm so deeply sorry from the bottom of my soul. I hate the thing that I did and will work on all available AODA, AA, and any therapeutic programs that are offered. Many people have expressed they feel I have no remorse. There have been a multitude of sleepless nights I've spent in prayer asking God and Ms. Vanden Bogart's forgiveness. There is no one who understands just how remorseful and emotionally distraught this tragic situation has been. Only God knows, and once again, I am incredibly and profoundly sorry to you. <laughs> and I always pray for your healing and your forgiveness. Every afternoon that I get out of my car at the end of my driveway on Highway 57 to go out and get the mail out of my, own, my mailbox uh, on Highway 57, I think to myself, oh, I hope there's not someone like Mr. Gann coming north or south and uh, in, in an intoxicated state and going to hit me. Uh, Mr. Michalik, in your sentencing memorandum, you appropriately remind me of my obligation uh, in this case to, and I'm quoting what you put in that memorandum, quote, fashion a sentence that does justice, close quote. You further go on to note that this obligation is difficult and unenviable. I agree, uh, but it is an obligation that I take uh, very seriously. I must fashion a sentence in this case that is fair and just not only to Mr. Gann, but also fair and just to Marilyn Vandenbogen, her husband, her family, and her friends, and this entire community. 
for the time that I have remaining in this position, and that's not much more, uh, I have an obligation to protect this community from drunk drivers who hurt and kill innocent victims. I need to continue to send the message to not only you, Mr. Gann, but to other uh, others who engage in these kind of offenses that there will be serious consequences if a drug driver hurts or kills uh, an innocent victim. I noted in uh, one of your statements to Ms. Meyer, the state's pre-sentence writer, uh, Mr. Gann, you made the comment that you felt I was, through my involvement in this case, trying to make an example of you. Uh, I am not trying, sir, to make an example of you, but again, you need to understand, and as I said, the public needs to understand that individuals convicted of these sorts of offenses, they are going to be dealt with harshly, harshly. The seriousness of your crime, the gravity of this offense, the horrible facts of this case, and the senseless killing of Marilyn Vandenbogert, those are the overriding and compelling factors in this case that are governing today the sentence I'm about to impose upon you, Mr. Gann. Mr. Gann, is there any reason I should not proceed to sentence you at this time? Mr. Gann, as I normally have defendants stand, but we'll just stay where we're all, we're all seated. Uh, Mr. Gann, on counts two, three, seven, and eight, those are the four misdemeanor counts. I am withholding sentence today on each one of those counts. I'm placing you on probation as to each one of those counts for a period of one year. All of those will be concurrent to one another, uh, but consecutive to any other sentence that I'm imposing uh, as a result of your count one conviction. On counts four, five, and six, those are the three felony bail jumping counts. I am also withholding sentence today and placing you on probation on each one of those counts for a period of three years. Each of those probationary terms will be consecutive to one another and consecutive to any other sentence uh, I'm imposing uh, in this matter. Uh, the reason I am doing that regarding those counts is I want to ensure that you, when you finish serving any other uh, term of additional confinement regarding count one, that once you finish serving that sentence, that you continue to be supervised for a period of time, uh, for virtually that's as long a period of time as I can require. The uh, conditions uh, of that probation and the conditions of the extended supervision I will be imposing momentarily regarding call one, are that you be responsible for payment of the state's court costs. They have a compass evaluation and follow through with any recommendations that are made as a result of that that you maintain absolute sobriety from alcohol, you're not to be any bars, taverns, or liquor stores, whether the primary purpose of the sale or the consumption of alcoholic beverages. You're not to be driving without a valid license. You have no contact with uh, the family members of Marilyn Vandenbogert. That you be in compliance with uh, prescription medication. Uh, and that you be responsible for restitution. Ms. Nardine, your office has submitted a uh, restitution request uh, $40,693.50. 40, well, Judge, that includes the 10% surcharge, which we would not be collecting because it doesn't come through my office. So the total to include the dismissed and read-in cases is $36,994.10. Thank you. So $36,994.10. Uh, Finally, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gann, as a result of my having found you guilty of count one in this matter, homicide by intoxicated use of a motor vehicle as a repeat criminal offender, I cannot envision from the facts of this case, from your character, from your record, uh, I cannot imagine a situation where it could be any more aggravated. I am imposing on that count the maximum sentence today of 31 years that will be broken down into 21 years of initial confinement and 10 years of extended supervision. That sentence is to be consecutive to any other sentence, as I said, I've already imposed in the matter. Uh, again, I conclude that a maximum sentence uh, is appropriate in this matter. It's 
justified uh, and uh, further the 10 years of extended supervision is justified to ensure your compliance with mental health treatment and to curb your involvement with the commission uh, of any other crimes.